AM 1060 KDUS Tempe Phoenix and KSLX HD2 Scottsdale Phoenix. Coming right up, another fun varsity sports show. In 2019, the JV Sports Show podcast began with the idea of spotlighting young people in our community. In time, that podcast evolved into radio, television, and live stream, and through that evolution, new ideas have enhanced delivery, giving a stage to students both in front of and behind the microphone in Arizona and beyond. Thank you for supporting the Varsity Sports Show, now the Varsity Media Foundation, a 501c3 educational organization. Hey, this is Sophie, and you're listening to my dad, Vince. Dad, you owe me 20 bucks now. Hi, kids. This is DJ Soul Man from the Funk Junkies, and you're listening to the Varsity Sports Show with my man, Vince Delicio. And what's, what's your last name? <laughs> it's it's Delicio. Okay, that's right. That's yeah, what I thought. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. AM 1060 KDUS Tempe Phoenix and KSLX HD2 Scottsdale Phoenix. <laughs> This program is paid for by the Varsity Media Foundation, a 501c3 nonprofit educational organization, and its partners. You're listening to the Varsity Sports Show, home of Arizona's youth, high school, college sports, and you, empowering education and enabling dreams, right here on KDUS AM 1060 in Arizona. And now, welcome to the Varsity Sports Show. Good morning. What we have in mind is breakfast in bed for 400,000. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Varsity Sports Show on AM 1060 KDUS Arizona. My name is Vince Delicio, and uh, today we have a special show. We like to think that every Saturday morning is a special show, um, and, and we, we obviously appreciate uh, and, and are so excited that you're starting your Saturday morning off with us. Um, you have choices, and to spend time uh, being... Uh, um, uh, being indoctrinated into some education every week and some insight. Uh, we try to do our best to, to deliver just that, and uh, and we're honored and, and privileged to do that every week. So my name is Vince Delicio. I am joined by uh, one of our very fine broadcast students. He is a collaborator this summer. His name is Douglas Santo uh, out of the Cronkite School of Mass Communications. Um, and I, I don't know. We, we, I just heard a loud moan here here for where we're at because I said that but uh, but yeah he's from up the road so we're not you know I'm in Tucson this morning by the way uh, but Doug how are you doing I'm doing good Vince I'm really excited for this show we've got a lot of fun live guests today yeah I'm just excited to get into it you're you're sitting with your back against the wall this morning so uh, you gotta yeah. you gotta watch everything that comes at you here because we're in Tucson and and this is a, a, a such an amazing uh, setting um, I, we're in a wine room here my gosh I, I've never been in such a setting and you know we're in in the National Football Foundation uh, Southern Arizona chapter uh, room here dedicated to the Hall of Fame uh, the College Football Hall of Fame uh, um, this is, I, I am just in awe because the gentleman sitting next to me has a glow coming off of him. I don't know if it was because he, he walked in this morning and it was hot outside and he just has a little bit of perspiration or if he has a genuine glow. But this guy is an icon. His name is Ricky Hunley. Yes, the Ricky Hunley. John Elway's teammate, for one thing, uh, in, in, in the NFL, but played years here at Arizona. They might as well name the stadium after him. Coach Hunley, thank you for joining us. You, you have, have really left a, a, an imprint on this program. <laughs> I don't know what else I could say. I don't, you're, it's not that you're speechless. You're just kind of listening to what I'm saying and deciding what you want to you know, respond to. But how are you doing, Coach? I'm, I'm doing great, and, and thank you. Thanks for coming down, Vince. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, an opportunity to promote uh, Arizona football, uh, Arizona women's flag football camp. Yeah. Uh, it's just so many things going on here. I mean, 
it's just a great time to be a Wildcat. Coach, I have to do one thing. You have to forgive me because I do this every year, and I just have to do it. I got this software here that allows me to call out. I'm going to do something really quick, so bear with me for just a minute. Bear. Bear with me for a minute. Bear down. Mm -hmm. Here we go. All right. Let me do this. Okay. Can you hear that okay? All right. I got to call somebody here. It's a special day. Let's see if he picks up. Yeah. Papa. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. How are you? Okay. It's my dad. Happy Father's Day. Thank you. Same to you. Yeah. My, 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 uh, what are you doing right now? It took you a while to answer the phone. No, just the first time he ring and I, I answer. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, so I was calling. So we do this every year. So I wanted to call and wish you happy Father's Day. Do you have anything special planned this weekend? Oh, yeah. Uh, tomorrow morning, I'm going to go. I've been invited to your place. Yeah, of, the, yeah of course. Yeah. So that, that's, yeah. That, will that be the highlight of your weekend coming to my house? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So yeah. I just, yeah, I wanted to wish you happy Father's Day. Uh, we do this, you know, as I said, every year, but uh, obviously I'll see you tomorrow. So uh, enjoy the rest yeah. of the day. Are you listening to the show? Yeah. Okay. I'm in Tucson. Oh, yeah. My, your mother, she told me last night. Okay. All right. Okay, good. So yeah. anyway, so say, uh, say good morning to Ricky Hunley. He played for the Denver Broncos. You know the Broncos? Yes. Yeah. Who is who is one of the famous people from De- that that played quarterback for the Denver Broncos? Do you remember? You didn't like him very much. Oh yeah. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, Jake the Snake? No, no, not Jake the Snake. No, John Elway. <laughs> yeah. This was no, John. I don't like him. Yeah, you didn't like him. Yeah. So no. yeah. So but he won a lot of I, games though. Yeah. Yeah, he won a lot of games, but. Uh, yeah, uh, I liked the other guy over there. Which one? The one he was playing with the Cardinal. Oh, Jake. And, oh, yeah, uh, exactly. So Jake did. Yeah, that's right. Jake played, but this Jake played after John Elway. John Elway was this man's teammate, yeah. Ricky Hunley. Ricky Hunley played yeah. for the Broncos. That's, yeah, that's it. Okay. Anyway, all right. So okay. So so say say hi to Ricky Hunley, and then I have to go. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Good luck. Right. And, um, and be careful. Drive the shave. I come back to uh, Phoenix. Right. Okay. I will. All right. See you, Pop. Okay. 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 okay bye. All right. Bye. bye. All right. Okay. We got bye. that out of the way. Thank you for for indulging me there, no, Coach. No, that's awesome. Okay. So, Coach. Thanks. So, yep. All right. You Thank can hang you. up. Okay. Bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. All right. Bye. Okay. Anyway. All right. Okay. So we got that out of the way. So anyway, today. Oh, and all, by the way, Coach, are you a father? Absolutely. Okay, so today is our show is dedicated to fathers everywhere. Because we're going to be joined by some dads throughout the show, uh, and hopefully we have the Doug's dad will be joining us at the end of the show as well. Coach, I, I would like you first of all to to what has what has it meant to be to be connected to this program here at the University of Arizona for all these years? Well, it's it's, it's kind of been a lifelong commitment. You yeah. Know, once a wildcat, you're always a wildcat. I mean, uh, it took me 39 years to get back to this place, and. Uh, I love every minute. I mean, every day in my exercise, I take a walk around campus for about three miles, and it just allows you to reminisce and remember all the good days that you had here. And uh, not even talking about the football, yeah, but just the beautiful campus and uh, you know uh, the atmosphere. It, it just brings back so many good memories. The uh, you've you've been connected. You you've been on the coaching staff for many years, on and off. You did a couple of tours here. I mean, you were here. You spent time. Uh, my gosh, through. Throughout the years, not only as a player, you came back, you coached a couple of times. Um, this last time with the previous regime, you, you coached on the defense. And now you're back, and your role now is a little bit different. You're, you serve as more of an ambassador to the program, which puts a little more pressure on you. Because these coaches, you know, a lot of them, with the exception of the head guy, they're kind of, you know, they stay behind the scenes. You're front and center. I mean, they're, they're, they are using your face, your marquee everywhere as being an ambassador. What kind of pressure is that? Well, you know, um, it's really a blessing that uh, people still appreciate the, the time that you spent here as a player. Yeah. They appreciate what you, you've done here in the community. Um, you know, I, I just... 
try to keep up with Brandon Sanders. He does so much here for all of our high school coaches, and uh, yeah. you know. And is this the guy sitting behind you oh, shaking yeah. his head? That's yeah. Mr. Sanders. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that's 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 the guy, Mr. Desert Storm, back there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you get a chance. He looks like him. he could still play. But, yeah. Uh, it really gives me an opportunity to continue to connect with the players in my role as uh, executive director of player relations and uh, external development. How does it feel um, in an age with you know name image, image likeness and and all these things with promises being made to kids? And and not a lot of, of of I hate to say this, but there are some programs that even to this day there's not a lot of integrity out there. And you've always kind of associated with yourself yourself with with programs that have that. When we were talking off off mic earlier, and we were talking about name image likeness and money that gets thrown around, and I asked you point blank, I said, are there still are there kids out there that still have honor? And you answered. Yeah, without a doubt. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, we, we kind of pride ourselves on recruiting those kind of kids, those high character kids come from great families uh, that want to be coached, uh, you know, that uh, want to be developed. And uh, they're not transactional. You know, they put the team first. And uh, those are the qualities that you need to have a consistent winning program. And I think that we've done a great job of, uh, especially with Coach Brennan, of, of bringing in those kind of kids and keeping it going. The um, Now there's a big push. There's a big initiative, and that's why Abby, who we'll introduce in the next 15, 20 minutes, is joining us because women's flag football. Talk about that and talk about the impact and, and what we can do and what a lot of the men's sports can do to help kind of foster that and continue to encourage it. What What's going on here? Well, the, the flag football, I, I think it's huge because now you're getting women involved in football. It can potentially be an Olympic sport one, you know, somewhere in the future. Yeah. Uh, it could be a full scholarship opportunity for a lot of young ladies uh, in the future. Um, I think it's a great thing. And uh, just to see them out there participating. I had a daughter who played tackle football. Really? And, yeah. And, um, you know, to to include more girls into football, I mean, they're going to learn more about the sports. I think it's going to help your fan base and people are going to follow football on, on different levels now. So it's a great thing. The um, how How is imp, uh, recruiting being impacted now as a result? I mean, do you see, are, are the universities, is it, a, is it a big club sport? It, has it developed? And will it be uh, NC2A and will it be, do you anticipate it being accepted I think that's kind of a leading question. The answer to that is yes. But what's it going to take to get there? I think it's just going to take awareness and participation and yeah. uh, people having more and more camps like uh, Coach Brennan is. He's doing the first ever women's flag football camp today here on campus. And oh. uh, Brandon to talk to him more about the details of But it's going to be huge. I mean, that's the start of something great. The uh, In terms of... of Talk a little bit about, real briefly, about your daughter and the fact that she played tackle football. Do you? How many years back are we going? And do you feel that maybe a flag football was around then that she would have she would have been involved in in that? I, I don't know if she would have been involved in that because yeah. she liked contact sports. Oh, okay. Well, gee, I wonder where that came from. Okay, okay. But uh, you know. I, I love seeing girls participate. I mean, I grew up in a family where it was enough of us. We had a football team, and the girls played with the guys. Yeah. You know, you know it's tackle football doing, you know, Thanksgiving, and everybody played. And, and so it's a fun thing. Um, but to see the opportunity for girls to actually get a full scholarship to play flag football yeah. at a major institution is, is going to be just outstanding. We are live uh, here in Tucson, Arizona, in, in, uh, at, in Arizona Stadium, here in the Sands, the Sands Room, is that well, what it's called? The, the Sands Club, with a bunch of, there's a bunch of wine bottles all over the place here, but in this Hall of Fame room, the College Football Hall of Fame, there's names, iconic names associated with the Arizona Wildcats and, and Desert Swarm, and we're joined by Desert Swarm royalty here in Brandon Sanders, who will be joining us here briefly. Guys, don't go anywhere. Doug and I are here. We'll be here till 11 o'clock. Uh, thank you so much, Coach Ricky Hunley, Executive Director Player Development here for the University of Arizona Wildcats football program. Guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after the break.
James Out West brings NFL, NBA, MLB, and local sports talk to you Monday night starting at 7 on KDUS AM 1060 and the KDUS 1060 app. APAC is your one-stop source for all your automotive and heavy-duty air conditioning parts, supplies, and equipment. They're family-owned and have been the Valley's go-to for all your auto AC needs since 1982. Whether it's for your everyday or vintage car, commercial, or off-road vehicle or equipment, APAC has you covered. Call APAC, AA, PAK, the AC experts at 602-254-1116 and ask for the Varsity Special to get 10% off your purchase. Hey guys, Vince here to talk about Angel Dentistry. It's where my wife and I have gone for over 10 years and we trust them with our routine and extensive dental care because they care. Dr. Amber Angel is an Arizona native, born in the town of Miami and has been practicing in the Valley over 20 years. For general to comprehensive dental services, call 602-788-2008. Located off of Cave Creek Road, just north of the 101 in North Phoenix. Angel Dentistry, proud supporters of our young people and proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show. Hello, everyone. My name is Nicholas Anderson. I'm a sports broadcasting student at the Hanks Greenspun School of Journalism at UNLV. I am stoked to start creating visual and audio segments along with broadcasting and sideline reporting for different games this season. As a writer for the UNLV Scarlet and Gray, I can provide insightful knowledge on a variety of different sports. I am excited to be a part of the team this season and looking forward to kicking off the year right on the Varsity Sports Show. The Varsity Sports Show is proud to once again be the official broadcast team of the Hohokam Junior College Athletic Conference. We are back for another year of HJCAC football. We'll bring you the JUCO Game of the Week, on-site live coverage, weekly JUCO report on Saturday morning's Varsity Sports Show, and coming this fall, the weekly coaches show with Coach Doug Madoski. Stay tuned for more. JUCO football is alive and well in Arizona. Brought to you by the Varsity Sports Show and the HJCAC. Carving out time in your afternoon for the Doug Gottlieb Show, right here on KDUS AM 1060, 100.7 HD2, and KDUS1060.com. Weekdays from 1 to 3 p.m. Welcome back to the Varsity Sports Show, AM 1060, KDUS Arizona. Vince. Delicio joined live by, uh, I'm, I'm here with Doug Santo. We're in the Sands Club here at the University of Arizona Wildcats Stadium. We're going to pivot a little bit as, as we are joined by an icon with this program. A couple icons today, my gosh. We First we had Ricky Hunley on with us, who is practically a household name here in uh, in, in Tucson. You've got, in a lot of households, you, you may have uh, people that have little... Uh, um, uh, 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 you see, you know, some candles in their house and things, and you got a picture of Ricky Hudley next to it, along with a picture of Wildcat Stadium. And we're joined by a key member of the Desert Swarm defense uh, in the 90s. His name is Brandon Sanders, and he coordinates uh, much of the high school relations here. He's running, he's a camp director. Uh, he's going to be working with the flag football camp. Coach Sanders, how are you, sir? I'm doing great, man. Getting ready to, you know, trying to get prepared for this uh, this evening. We got 20 teams, 20 high school teams. I think wow. it's fantastic. Coach, I got to ask you, uh, what what was the draw? How how difficult was it to put this thing together? Because it, it's always hard to be first at something. You know, it's easy once people have done it for a while because then you can just kind of piggyback. But when you're first to do something, what what's involved with putting a camp like this together? Ooh, um, you know, a lot of a lot of logistics and trying to work through the NCAA. Um, to make it, you know, uh, one uh, legal because these these uh, females are um, pros- prospect age, and then the next thing we have is um, trying to help us. Well, trying to see how we can get them assistance because we can't do it for free. NCAA says we can't just hold a camp for a prospect of age. Um, people. So, um, you know, I, I have some affiliation. I played uh, three years in New York with the Giants. I know a few people in the NFL. So spoke to Troy Vinson, um, and, uh, Horace Raymond up mm-hmm. in, up with the Cardinals and and just said, what can we do to help these um, these teams? And the Cardinals really jumped on board and, and uh, NFL girls flag and said, hey, here's what we can do. We'll sponsor all the te- any teams that want to play. We'll sponsor them all. Wow, which was which was fantastic. Um, so we sent out an email and said, "Hey, if you guys want to play, we'll cap it at twenty five, so yeah. you have a good experience on our fields." And um, 
and now we have 20. It was great. It's great. So yeah. they'll be here today. And, you know, and, and, and everybody in this community really jumped in. So so you so you're working with uh, with a couple of NFL teams. You said you're working with the Cardinals as well. Uh, yes. The Cardinals this. will be down here. Yeah. Um, in, in, in them because they're the whole state, whole city. And, yeah. and then, uh, you know, of course, NFL uh, for girls flag as well. Are trying to. Yeah. They, they won't be here, but the Cardinals will be great. Nice. Are they hiring? Do you think maybe they'll give me a shot at something? I don't know. Anything? I don't no. know. I have, okay. I have They won't t- return my calls. You know. I, don't, I don't know. Anyway. As a matter of fact, they're sending out one of our former players, Trey Griffey, will be yeah. here. Yeah. So okay. That's, that's super right, cool. I'm going to be, I'm, I'm, I'll be on your hip all day then. <laughs> all right. Uh, Doug, you had a question for Coach. Yeah, Coach. I know it's one of the NFL's priorities to um, be involved in the grassroots of flag football here. Um, as this is the first one, how do you, obviously it's exciting with the first one, um, how do you hope for it to grow from here? Well, I think like like um, you're saying, it's just, it's good to be, you know, first. Um, I think in the next five years, like sometimes you just need that, that extra push. You just need that help to get it started. And then any of the hiccups that we have today, we can go to the N- NCAA and say, yeah. hey, this is what you need to do to help, help foster this because it's, it's coming and and you're not going to stop it and um, when you think about football and I just talk about football because this is part of football over the last 10 15 years football has been under attack right nobody yeah. wants to play and everything else this are the kind of things that bring people back the the National Football Foundation particularly the Southern Arizona chapter has been very instrumental in in a, a being active in a lot of these different activities and you having been a, a board member of the organization, what, you know, what's, what has, has having an organization like that, how important has that been to kind of have your back and, and to be as involved as they have? I think when you really look at, um, you know, not just the, the national, oh, sorry, yeah, the national football foundation, but mm-hmm. the, the people, you know, I think when um, coach Tim Kish took over, he really, really um, amped everything up as far as being visible as far as uh, going out to schools and in in promoting um athletes you know when i was a uh, when i was coming out of high school way back when in 1990 91 yeah um you know there's this the san diego chapter and yeah I, I i won the award and i've been part of that so i think those are kind of things that um need to help with high school sports yeah um high school sports is huge and, and the more you can foster it, the, the better off it. Uh, we all are. Excuse me, Coach, you and I are the same age, and, and I really I think I hate your guts now because you, you look like whatever it is that you're doing, you look like you're 20 years younger than me. I don't know what it is. I, I'm, I'm telling you, this well, is not fair. I wouldn't say that. I, mean, yeah. I was talking to our um, athletic director, um, Desiree Francois, Reed Francois. And, yeah. So I'm running in a marathon, marathon next year. Okay, well, that's so where you to, and I are different. Yeah, I'm sorry. This yeah. will be the last yeah. big thing I'm it's, doing. It's the yeah. Boston Marathon. Actually. Okay, no, I, I get up and I, I get up from the couch and I'll go check the mail. And, I, and that's and about I it. haven't even tried to wow. start training for you. Okay, but I'm doing, all right. Doing okay, you months. could stop now, Coach. <laughs> okay. So anyway, no, I'm just kidding. So You're Coach fine. Brandon Sanders, who who coordinates uh, high school relations here, how it, since you were a player and and the development of the role that you sit in now. It used to be you had a, a coaching staff and then you had a couple of grad assistants and that was it. Now, with all the specialization, you keep busy. This isn't a cush job where you come in and you just sit in a chair all day. I mean, you're out there beating the bushes and really trying to promote all the good things that are happening here. What's it been like in, in, in terms of having this role and, and not having it? I mean, is this something that should have been in place all along? Um, I think so. Um, you know, I, I was a high school head, head coach and athletic director sure. um, out here in Tucson. Um, when I got this role, really, we kind of made it up as we went. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize there were so many um, burned bridges for alum football alone. yeah and so we've bridged a lot of gaps we've had more people come back um not just not just your your nfl guys nick Foles and all those but yeah anybody that felt you know we i mean we had the the first african-american quarterback here from the 1970s uh, 70s um bruce hill we've had yeah. a number of guys from the 60s we even had two guys they, they used to come um, to our spring game from 1951 team Wow How about that. And so um, it's just trying to bridge those gaps. And I've gotten a lot of people, um, even from our alternate schools to say, you know, they see what we're doing and they're trying to because yeah. there, there is there is value in our alum and in the high school relations, because I've been out here in high school. And right. AD, sure. Um, that it just helps 
smooth a lot of things, such as this flag football. You know, I could call the AIA because I know the president there. Sure. He helped me through a lot of things, and I know a lot of those people there to say, hey, look, this is what we're trying to do. Can you get the athletic directors on board? Can we get this thing going? And, and they jumped to the board. Joined by Brandon Sanders, who's coordinating the, the first ever uh, girls flag football camp here at the University of Arizona and coach uh, Brent Brennan who will be uh, making an appearance and being very active here what what what's this guy like what's this Brennan guy like <laughs> um, well I played against him he yeah. played against me when he was at UCLA really um, and then I've known him for a few for, for some years now not just here because he uh, one thing I, I would say we both have um, the same mentors and coach to uh, Dick Tomey yeah um, and he's a people person he's down to earth he cares about the people, not just, you know, coaches, not just the players, but yeah. the person behind that title. And I mean, that's kind of what coach um, coach told me was. I think when I first got this job, he was at San Jose State and I didn't know. There was a couple of things I didn't know. And I just text him, hey, what do I do on this? This is here's what you got to do. Here's what you got to do. That's yeah. the kind of person he is. He's a head coach at a whole nother different organization. And he's still helping me, um, you know, wiggle my way through trying to bridge these gaps and everything else he he's a he's definitely um unique in that that aspect uh, all these guys walking by are these guys that are on coaching staff yes we have official visits going on oh okay <laughs> oh wow maybe we can uh, we can get some recruits in here and, and find out get some commitments they would absolutely say they would absolutely say no to that <laughs> yeah i know they would are. Kill me. <laughs> i know and they wouldn't say yes to me anyway yeah you know regardless anyway coach brandon sanders thank you so much for joining us talking about the first ever girls flag football camp here at the university of arizona and one of the first if not the first in the country uh it, it'll be interesting the footprint that you're leaving behind here that other schools and other programs will follow. Coach, good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. It. Aaron, take it away. Hello, everyone. This is Mark Berger from the University of Wisconsin-Madison reporting for the Varsity Sports Show. My father, who just turned 60 years old on June 6th this year, has been someone I've looked up to for my entire 22-year existence. He has pushed me to be a good person and to succeed in life. And he taught me valuable lessons that only made me a better person. And that is something I will forever be grateful for. We also share a bond in watching sports together. Whenever I'm at his house, we would either have an NFL game, Milwaukee Bucks, or Brewers games to watch on TV on the couch. And sharing a nice father-son moment together. When I turned 21, we were able to share a Miller High Life beer together, watching sports and just having a good time. And that was just something that I really always will cherish and forever will. We also have gone to many Milwaukee Brewers baseball games together in my lifetime, enjoying a father-son bond at American Family Field for Brewers baseball. It is truly fun to get to do that with him. But what is a father? Well, I think a father is someone who encourages you to keep going and gives you great advice on your future. And he did exactly that. Without him, I would not be the person I am today. So I want to thank my dad for being there for me every step of the way, and I cannot wait to see what the future holds. Even though I am not home as often now that now that I'm in college and have an internship, I love coming home to visit my dad and enjoying my time with him. I love you, Dad, and have a great Father's Day this Sunday. Again, this is Mark Berger reporting for the Varsity Sports Show from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. This is Robert Diaz with Varsity Sports Show. I'm here with former Major League Baseball player and scout Bobby Ramos. How are you? Thank you, Robert. My pleasure to spend some time with you. Having a good day with talking baseball. <laughs> so I want to go to right now, to the current. What are your thoughts on the Arizona Diamondbacks right now? Well, the Diamondbacks, they're a great organization. Uh, their, their last year, they really overachieved and they did a great job against knocking the Dodgers out, who was, for me, they had the best team and they still got the best club. Uh, and right now they're, they're not, they're not off to a good start this year, but you can't count them out because, uh, they, they're going to, they, they have a good manager and a great pitching coach and Ben Strong and, and they have a young team that are really going to come on strong and and played better the second half. Yeah, one of the things I reported on was um, was how they've had some injuries um, that have really um, hindered them so far, but I think they're coming back strong. I mean, they've won, what, nine out of their last 12, I believe, which is pretty That's good. correct. 
which is pretty good. And I mean, I'm liking the direction that they're going. Um, are there any players or prospects that young players that catch your eye on the Arizona Diamondbacks? Well, they they have a they they have a bunch of kids from they have a Venezuelan catcher that is really good and can catch and throw, and they have a lot of they have a great minor league system and they're developing kids that they won't be ready in two or three years, but they really do a good job developing young young talent and signing those guys. And um, what's one thing that you like that you'd say about the the Diamondbacks, and one thing that you'd improve right now? For me, for for me, uh, I think they got to stay healthy. That's the biggest thing is to keep keep your pitching, uh, your starting pitching, and your and your bullpen guys healthy, and and be a little more consistent with with uh, scoring runs. Uh, they they had a little bit of problems at the beginning of the year scoring runs and putting uh, putting good at bats together, but I think they're they're getting a lot better. But just be more a little more consistent in the second half in these two areas. That's going to help them win more games. What do you think could really help them moving forward to try and, you know, climb to 500 and then above that possibly to a playoff run? Well, they're, they're you know, they, the good thing about it is their pitching is keeping them in the game. They're not they're not getting blown out. They're losing 3-1, to 4-2, uh, to low-scoring games. So when that happens, you concentrate on getting getting your hitters in, in track. Get, you know, get better at bats, more quality at bats, work out the counts. Uh, let's get some more guys on, on base. Let's let's see if we, if, you know, hit a run, let's move runners over. Let's let's be fundamentally uh, solid. Got on third base, listen to out, uh, try to drive him in. Uh, do the little things. Not, not Don't swing for the fence. Don't try to hit a, a three-run shot. Try to put, play small ball. You know, put the ball in play. Uh, get keep the keep the ball out of the air. You know, I, I you know bear down on 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 this on the discipline. If they're swinging out of the strike zone, you have to look at the game, and you have to see what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong, and and and, and go from there. And and the manager and coaches, they 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 know they they know what they're doing and what they need to to be done. So. It's all up to the to the players to be to be more consistent in each which each at bat. Everybody has to take care of their their their, their at bats and their and their you know their swings and you know and don't try to do don't try to overdo stuff. That's that's when you get in trouble when you try to do way too much. So I got a lot of guidance I, how to handle myself off the field, how to carry yourself, you know, on the field and off the field. Uh, how not to take uh, a bat personally? Teach you know he taught me how to how to separate my offense to my defense. A lot of guys, a lot of guys, when they don't hit really well, they take that to the field, and that's the worst thing that can happen. Because now you're really hurting the team. If you're not hitting, catch 400. <laughs> Make sure the other guy is not getting any hits. Make sure you throw your guys out. Make sure you block the ball. Make sure you call a good game. Make, make sure you're in, you 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 communicating with your pitching staff, uh, good and regular guys. No situation outs, hitters, and do a good job defensively. Thank you for listening. I'm Robert Diaz with Varsity Sports Show. So hey, Robert, welcome to the show. Hey, it's great to be on. It's great to be on. It was really cool hearing from Bobby Ramos just about you know a perspective of somebody who's played the game, been in the game. Um, and kind of what's going through the players' mindsets at this point in the season. What was kind of your thought process, and how did you choose Bobby Ramos to interview? Um, it was a natural choice because he was a very um, good player. Um, he he worked with his time with the Expos and the Yankees. Um, he had had many years of experience, and I knew him through a friend of mine. He was a next-door neighbor, and I was able to go see his office and see all the memorabilia he has. And he stays very current and up-to-date, you know, because he was working pretty recently, now retired. But he has a very good current outlook on baseball with good fundamentals that he supports. Yeah, that's awesome. It was great to hear from him, and thank you for joining the show. Thank you very much for having me. This is Nicholas Anderson from the Hanks Greenspun School of Journalism at UNLV reporting for the Varsity Sports Show.
This weekend is a very special weekend as I get to reflect and talk about my dad on this Father's Day special on the Varsity Sports Show. My dad is the cornerstone of my family. He embodies the perfect dad with strength, wisdom, and unwavering love for his children. His dedication to proving and caring for my family is matched only by his remarkable patience and kindness. Here's a fun fact about my father. He grew up in Moore, Oklahoma, and as a young kid, he grew up a fan of watching the Oklahoma Sooners and Dallas Cowboys playing every Saturday and Sunday. When he came to Las Vegas to have me, he immediately turned me into a sports fan, mainly watching the Oklahoma Sooners in football. At the time, Oklahoma didn't have a professional basketball team until the Sonics relocated in 2008 to become the Oklahoma City Thunder. My dad wasn't a big basketball fan growing up, but when I sparked an interest in basketball, he immediately supported it and we both grew up watching basketball together. And now reflecting on the countless memories that we have had watching all of those Oklahoma Sooner and Thunder games just brings back so many memories that I am so appreciative of. From the countless hours spent mentoring and supporting me in the hobbies and activities I love to simply yet profound moments of laughter and guidance, my dad has instilled in me the values of integrity, resilience, and compassion. My father embodies the heart and soul of a loving, caring, and supportive father. Another thing I would love to add is that I have been bowling since I was a young kid. And my father, who had never bowled seriously, has now joined me on a path to competing in local tournaments here in Las Vegas. We just finished off our very first local league here together, and now he is bowling his very first USBC Nationals with me this year. It's an event that I am extremely excited about, and it just shows the charisma and dedication my father has picking up a hobby because I enjoy it and now competes with his son. It's incredible. My dad is not just a parent, but a true friend, my best friend, someone I can go to and talk about pretty much anything to. This is for you, Dad. Happy Father's Day. From the Varsity Sports Show, I'm Nicholas Anderson. Listener rewards for you with the KQS 1060 app. Download today to hear all of the national and local shows you love. That's the KDUS 1060 app. The Angry Crab Shack in Tempe, with an experience so good it remains indescribable, with something for every seafood lover. Try one of their amazing custom seafood boils, sandwiches, appetizers, and salads. Angry Crab Shack Tempe is located east of I-10 on Warner Road, 480-674-3847. The Angry Crab Shack in Tempe, come ready to eat. Have you downloaded the KTUS 1060 app yet? Download today and get all of your favorite local and national shows right on your phone. Welcome back to the Varsity Sports Show on AM 1060 KTUS Arizona. Vince Delicio, Doug Santo. We are in the Sands Club at Arizona Stadium here in Tucson, Wildcat Country. I'm actually I'm sporting my my U of A Wildcat shirt. Uh, it, I, I, I had to do it, guys. I'm sorry, you know. Here uh, and and I had to get myself in the door. So certain things that you have to do once in a while. No, they've been very accommodating. We were joined in the first segment by a legend, icon in this community and across the country, particularly in, in professional football, uh, Ricky Hunley. And then we had Brandon Sanders, who also had a pretty pretty nifty resume himself, and now coordinates uh, high school relations here for the U of A and running a, a flag football camp that's going on out here today. And we are joined by Abby Rustand. Uh, Abby is whose who's grandfather, who's, Warren, was a legend here at U of A, an All-American basketball player, um, but she is is quite an athlete herself, going to be down here attending the U of A from Utah, and uh, I, well, let me turn it over to you. So, Abby, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, thanks, Abby, for joining us. Um, Awesome to talk to you about flag football today. Obviously playing at Dixie State, now Utah Tech, um, and now coming back here to U of A and mm -hmm. going to be enrolled um, next semester and uh, carrying down the legacy through your family. Um, what, what opportunities are you able to do with flag football here at U of A? I mean, it's amazing. So the way I started my flag football journey was through intramurals, and so that's a great lead way into it. Um, but it's also great because attending the U of A, I also get to play for Elite Flag Football League still, so that's a local league in Tucson. And they're super inclusive and super supporting of women's flag football, and they're super 
just an amazing opportunity for me because they sponsor us a lot to be able to go and play in other tournaments for USA flag, um, which will be participating in the 2028 Olympics now. So, I mean, it leads right into the end goal, really. Yeah, that's awesome to hear. And obviously, you're a very talented flag football player. Um, trying to, we might be talking to a future Olympian here <laughs> in 2028. Um, but what is, uh, what have you enjoyed about flag football? And just take us like kind of through your journey of playing. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, like I said, I started intramural. So it's just, you know, some college friends playing. Um, but now it's really a huge community that I surround myself with. I mean, some of my closest friends came from flag football now. And so it's super fun being able to play with your friends and your teammates, but also just having these journeys together. Um, like some of my friends and I get to go play in the WNFC uh, all pro tournament next weekend. So it's amazing opportunities like that, that we just get to experience experience together and it starts creating those bonds on and off the field and like I mentioned earlier the elite flag football league is a huge part of that because it's all of our friends our community here in Tucson that allow um, moms outside of college people in college the high school girls coming in to play flag football um, either getting ready to play in college for scholarships or just playing locally um, they've been su I'm so grateful for them to be able to give me that community that I just get to play with yeah that's awesome and it's really cool to hear um, just the, the support that's around flag football right now and those organizations and stuff that are allowing it to be played and um, supporting it and stuff because like I didn't even know about some of those and it just shows like that if we can educate more people on the sport and grow the representation just how much it can grow for women's sports in general. Um, how do you, uh, today at the Arizona Stadium we're gonna have a flag football camp here later today. How do you, how good do you think that is and how important do you think that is to grow just the representation of the sport? Yeah, I mean, it's huge coming from a university, especially one as big as the University of Arizona. Um, the NFL have been super, um, they, they've been promoting women's flag football for a while now. And so they've been a huge impact for the flag football um, world and the flag football game, especially for women and girls in high school. Um, but for the University of Arizona and Coach Sanders and Coach Brennan to be putting this on for the girls is huge because like Ricky Hundley was talking about earlier, I mean, it's a huge thing now for women to be able to play on full scholarships in college. And then you also get to think about the Olympics in 2028 now. So for the University mm -hmm. of Arizona to be putting this on is humongous for the girls' opportunities moving forward. Yeah, and all we can ask is that it continues to grow, the representation continues to grow, and uh, just the knowledge of the sport in general continues to grow. Um, how do you think, like, going forward from this, um, you talked about that there were some tournaments um, that you were going to be playing in throughout the summer. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so the WNFC one we have next weekend in Dallas. Um, so we're super excited for that. We get to represent the San Diego Rebellion, which will be super fun. Um, and then we also have the one tournament in July, which is a recruiting tournament for the national team. Um, so that'll be a huge opportunity. Uh, our team's ranked number one right now going into the tournament. So that's a huge target as well. A lot of um, a lot of focus on that and a lot of eyes watching because there'll be recruiters and spectators there. Um, and then, yeah, and then we get to roll right into our USA season, which is leading up to the world championships we have in January. So that's the great part about flag football, too, is everyone asks when our off season is, but we run all year. I mean, we don't have an off season. And there's tournaments every single month going on so we're excited for the future yeah yeah that sounds awesome and it sounds like a lot of work as well like absolutely tackle men's tackle football is um like they have an off season for a large portion of the summer and even more than that and it sounds like flag football is more of like a year-round thing which is great for the athletes because they're able to stay involved in the game yeah um and continue to grow it even more but that's a lot of work as well um what kind of after these tournaments what it what kind of opportunities is there for flag football at this point for like at a professional level um like past the olympics and stuff yeah no absolutely um so that's the great part too is we i've been able to uh, be blessed to be able to coach some of the select camps which also run with the nfl um, so there's those opportunities of coaching those select teams, helping run that from a media standpoint, from a branding standpoint, and things like that. 
Um, and then also just being uh, organizer runners of the USA flag football community. There's now some of my friends even that are head football coaches for girls flag football high school teams um, and then also college teams as well. So you get to start coaching college, um, helping those out, and then also being a head football coach for a high school team. Um, there's a lot of people, especially like the Elite Flag Football League right now, they're commissioners and they're running the league for us to be able to get to that future and to get to that end goal. So, I mean, there's opportunities everywhere, coaching or supporting, being a commissioner for them, being a voice for them even is just huge. So lots of opportunities past the Olympics once you're done playing, especially. <laughs> Yeah, that's really amazing to hear um, that the, the support is there and it's just continuing to grow. More opportunities are um, coming in the sport um, as it grows and grows in representation. Um, really, thank you for joining the show this morning, Abby. Abby Rustand, once again, um, here at the U of A. And uh, I just want to thank the National Football Foundation, the um, Southern Arizona Region Chapter, for giving us the opportunity to be live here from the U of A this morning. Um, getting to talk about flag football um, and just the growth of the sport and uh, being able to grow the representation of the sport here at the U of A, especially today um, and going forward. So thank you, Abby, for joining yeah. the show. Thank you for having me. Aaron, take it away. This is Riley Robertson from Arizona State reporting for the Varsity Sports Show. Today I am chatting with head coach of the Saguaro High School men's basketball team, Lucas Ramirez. Here's a little bit about what he and his players have been doing over the summer. Um, you know, summertime, like for any program or any sport, uh, you know, you, you're always doing something, you know, for us, we're, we're in the gym, uh, four days out of the week, uh, lifting and, and working on our skills, working on our team development. Um, and then throughout the summer, we're playing in different leagues and tournaments and, and, um, you know, just getting a chance to evaluate our guys. Um, you know, for us, it's really easy, easier, um, because we have seven or eight returners, um, so the familiarity with our concepts and just how we do things makes it really, really smooth. And then it makes it easy for any newcomers we have, you know, whether they're freshmen or whether they're, they're, uh, transferring in, um, you know, so, so it makes the adjustment pretty good in the summertime, but, you know, that's what our guys are doing. And, you know, us as a coaching staff, you know, we're working our youth camps, uh, you know, we're trying to prep for the season and evaluate just kind of where our guys are at and how we need to move forward and, and, you know, evaluate what other concepts, whether it be offensively or defensively, you know, what we need to do, um, you know, to uh, to make us the best we can be. One of the most unique things about a high school coach is their ability to leave an imprint on their students, and Coach Ramirez is no rookie in that field. Here he is talking a little bit about what makes his coaching style unique. First off, like, I am, I am very fortunate. I have a tremendous staff, um, and it really starts from, from the top all the way down. We have a great principal, Ann Oxiger. We have a great athletic director, Matt Harris. Um, without having that alignment uh, and belief in our vision, then nothing's, you know, nothing's really possible. That's any level, any school you're at, any sport. Um, so it starts with them, you know, and just having a belief in, in, in what we do. Um, and then it goes all the way down to, you know, our strength and conditioning coach, Jonathan Castillo, who works with our guys three times a week, uh, our trainer, Nikki May, who's relentless and is just passionate about what she does and, and making sure our athletes are healthy. Um, and then our coaching staff, you know, I'm lucky. I got Brock Lemon, Rorris Woolridge, uh, Avante Nelms, Drew Raskin, and they're great. They've all played at a high level or coached at a high level. Each of them have, have played or coached at the collegiate level. Um, you know, so, so that's huge for our guys. Um, to have an understanding of what that looks like bigger than basketball and winning and losing is cool um, or winning's fun and cool losing sucks. But uh, you know, the reality is uh, at the end of the day, that's really minuscule compared to to the bigger picture and just kind of teaching life lessons. Cause not everyone's going to play in college. Very few of them, if any, are going to play professionally, you know? So um them understanding like the big picture of, of, of why we do things, the how and the why. Success is defined differently by different people, but here is how Coach Ramirez and his staff define the success of their team. Where you show or, 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 or prove, you know, success or growth um, is did your team improve from, you know, whenever the process started. So for us, right, it really starts in the spring when the season ends and we start our next wave of spring workouts, 
we should be always striving to improve, you know, like I've alluded to, but really um, that's been my emphasis really every year that I've been, been here at tomorrow is are we playing our best January and February? So for us, the end goal is like, obviously you want to play your best at the end of the season, because that means you give yourself the best chance to advance in the postseason. Same way the college guys or the pro guys want to be playing their best basketball, you know, like in March in college or, you know, the NBA right now, you know, guys want to be playing their best right now. So um, it's, it's the same target, you know, for us toward the end of our season from a X's and O's and results standpoint, that's the best way to show growth. Um, but when you talk about like showing the growth of, uh, of a person or a player in your program, uh, you know, I think the, the real result is, you know, when you get a phone call, three years after they're done playing for you. Hey, I'm about to graduate college. Hey, I'm, I'm getting married. Hey, I'm, I need your help, you know, with a job reference, uh, you know, for guys to, to, to still want to keep you in their life. You know, I think that's, you know, really the true sign of, Hey, I've, I've made a difference and, and, you know, teachers have that impact. Coaches have that impact. You don't have to be the head coach to have that impact. Um, you know, so, I think that's also a, a great uh, test of uh, or sign of showing that there was growth and you made an impact too. Thank you so much for listening. I'm Riley Robertson from Arizona State reporting for the Varsity Sports Show. Hey, Riley, thanks for joining the show this morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you. So it was really cool listening to Lucas Ramirez just talking about, you know, how the, how they're working throughout this throughout this summer with the team and how players are coming back and just trying to get them all gelling together and his great coaching staff surrounding him. Um, What kind of went through your thought process and what made him kind of special or why'd you pick him to interview? Yeah. So obviously he was supposed to be on the show last week, but wasn't able to make it. So I wanted to get a chance to kind of spotlight him. And I've heard about all the amazing things that him and his coaching staff have been doing um, with their team and the work that they've been doing over the summer. And I just thought it that it was really unique, um, all the stuff that they've been able to do and how their team, like, obviously they've, I think he said seven or eight returning members. So I think that that's really interesting. And the fact that he's able to get all of those kids in for summer workouts and get them kind kind of getting into shape for the season and getting in the right mindset um, and just to kind of hear his thought process and how they run things over there. I think that I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to see what coach Lucas Ramirez and the Saguaro team do this coming season and uh, just the growth that they make each and every day. Um, Thank you for joining the show. Yes, of course. Thank you for having me. Turn those picks into gold. Wall-to-wall NFL coverage and the biggest stories coming to you from 3 to 5 p.m. The Rich Eisen Show here on KDUS AM 1060 and KDUS1060.com. Hello, sports fans. This is Dick Stockton, and you are listening to Arizona's home of youth, high school, college, and you. The Varsity Sports Show on AM 1060, KDUS, Arizona. Check out the Doug Gottlieb Show, Monday through Friday, 1 to 3 p.m., right here on KDUS AM 1060. Varsity Sports Show. I'm Mac Fam. I'm here with Mateo Ortiz, founder of Sons of Montezuma, uh, and a broadcast partner for Swish AM. Uh, so Mateo, tell me, tell me a little bit about Sons of Montezuma, uh, and tell me a little bit also about Swish AM. Thank you, Mac. Thanks for having me on. So Sons of Montezuma is a San Diego State focused sports brand. We have created a podcast, a clothing brand that that creates NIL partnerships with players all over various sports at San, uh, San Diego State. And our work with our YouTube channel is we are going to be the live stream broadcast channel for the Swish League Pro-Am, which is San Diego's longest and, and most widely known basketball pro-am. 
So that's the work that we're going to be doing and really excited about it. Tell me about the goals of these broadcasting opportunities. Yeah, so Swish, they're going into their sixth season of being a pro-am. And with Sons of Montezuma, we've been able to create a partnership and, and, and even before this this year's opportunity, create a relationship with their founders. Um, some of their founders are very instrumental in bringing over African youth um, to the States to play at various colleges here in San Diego. And so through our relationships with with that organization, the African Youth Basketball Organization, we've grown into, you know, partnering with them. It just, our, our goal is really to highlight the work that they're doing with the Swish League, some of their other groups that they have involved themselves with, and and really just build the basketball culture um, through the Swish League, through this Pro-Am. And of course, for Sons of Montezuma on our side, you know, we want to, you know, create a, a wider base and audience for our, for our channel. So it sounds like a lot of a lot of like, you know, beyond just basketball, a lot of relationship building and just trying to open up the door for, for a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. What they're doing, they've been doing for, like I said, their sixth year now. They're doing a lot of good work in, in creating opportunities for basketball players, for referees, because, you know, the Swish League, it's NBA and NCAA certified uh, pro-am. So there's a lot of opportunities for not only the athletes, but the other supporting uh, pieces and components to a, to a game, to a league. You know, they're all trying to gain that experience. What are you looking forward to the most for this, uh, for this series of event? Ooh, um, uh, the, the obvious games, right. Getting that first look at these players, some of these up and coming players that are transferring in from different schools to San Diego, uh, area colleges, you know, San Diego State, UCSD. This is a, a first chance that people are going to be able to see some of the new additions and also seeing some of the former players come back that have been playing overseas, uh, various leagues all over Europe, Asia, all over. So that's number one. It's always the game, right? But number two for us at Sons of Montezuma is really the broadcast, pushing our limits, something new that we're going to be doing, you know, getting the live stream, the, the broadcast, the, the commentators. It's, there's a lot of moving parts that are going to go into it. So really excited to see how that goes. And what, what made you want to partner with uh, Swish AM? What was intriguing about them? Well, for San Diego State fans, first and foremost, it's something we look forward to, like I said, trying to get that first glimpse of the newest players, but realizing that that Swish, I mean, they they cover every single university, every junior college, you know, there's so many different uh, players that they've built in this community with. So that's something that's really intriguing to us as hoop heads. You know, we all know you want to you want to get those looks and, and it's really basketball culture in San Diego. So really cool. So it, it's really all about building the, the basketball culture here in San Diego and also giving giving opportunities for people to like hone in on their broadcasting skills uh, and, and just showcasing basketball talent here in, in San Diego. And you know, with, with that being said, thank you for, for your time. Thank you. Thank you for your insight on on Switch AM and Sons of Montezuma. For Varsity Sports Show, I'm Mac Fan. Hey, Mac, that was really nice hearing about um, just the partnership between the Swish Pro-Am and the Sons of Montezuma um, and how that partnership is going to work, bringing representation, both the podcast and the young players in the area. Um, how did you choose Mateo uh, Ortiz to interview and really pick him for this? I decided I decided this new stop because uh, I was just blowing around uh, social media and I saw that there were there, there was a opportunity I came across it where I saw an opportunity like an ad where where it gave where it gave uh, folks to get their hands on on broadcasting such as commentary um, sideline reporting play by play, all of, all that sort of stuff. So I came across it through socials and I thought it was I thought it was a it, it'd be something very interesting to cover. Yeah, I totally agree. It sounds like an, a really cool opportunity for both the broadcast side and the players involved. Um I really appreciate you joining the show this morning. 
Yes, sir. All right. After the break, we are going to have 10-time state championship high school volleyball coach and board member of the National Football Foundation Southern Arizona chapter joining us after the break from the Varsity Sports Show and the AM 1060 KDUS Arizona Radio. I'm Doug Santo. Hello, my name is Robert Diaz of the University of Florida reporting for the Varsity Sports Show. What makes my dad special is his love for sports. He is largely the reason why I'm here today at Varsity Sports Show. It started when I was young when my dad taught me how to play baseball. He was my little league coach growing up. Although I didn't make it to the MLB, these experiences were formative and helped fuel my lifetime passion for sports. My father has always valued education. He's a graduate of the University of Florida Law School and is a lifetime Gator. I cannot thank him enough for valuing education and helping me get to where I am today. I'm graduating a year early and beginning my master's degree next fall with his support. His passion for justice and dedication to his community, shaped by his upbringing and time at the University of Florida, have always inspired me. He balanced his career as a respected lawyer with his role as a devoted family man, showing me that it's possible to pursue your dreams while being there for the people you love. He has been the best father I could ask for. He has helped support my passions and guide me through life's many obstacles. So today, I want to celebrate my dad, Roberto Diaz. He's not just a lawyer or a baseball coach. He's the dad who taught me the value of hard work, the joy of the game, and the importance of being there for others. Here's to you, Dad. Enjoy your day, and thank you for everything. Thank you for listening. I'm Robert Diaz with Varsity Sports Show. Hey, listeners. Vince Delisio here from the Varsity Sports Show. We are so excited and honored that you start your weekends off with us. Our team is comprised of very talented high school and college students working toward a future in media. We appreciate your support and any opportunities that we can to promote your teams or businesses will go a long way toward helping us continue supporting our talented team. We are a 501c3 nonprofit educational organization and we use our platform to not only promote all of the great things happening in the world of sports locally and nationally, but also continue to promote and encourage future broadcasters as they grow in this industry. Please consider a tax-deductible donation to the Varsity Media Foundation. To find out more, please email us at info at varsitysportshow.com or check us out on Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok at Varsity Sports Show or on Twitter at Varsity Show. Once again, thank you for supporting the Varsity Sports Show now a nationally syndicated program on the Sports Map Radio Network. Thank you for listening to the Varsity Sports Show, where our mission is to empower education and enable dreams, creating an unmatched platform to showcase talent both in front of and behind the microphone in radio, television, podcast, and live streaming. The Varsity Sports Show, still your home for youth, high school, college, and you in Arizona and beyond. AM 1060 KDUS Tempe Phoenix and KSLX HD2 Scottsdale Phoenix. APAC is your one-stop source for all your automotive and heavy-duty air conditioning parts, supplies, and equipment. They're family-owned and have been the Valley's go-to for all your auto AC needs since 1982. Whether it's for your everyday or vintage car, commercial, or off-road vehicle or equipment, APAC has you covered. Call APAC, double A, P A K, the AC experts at 602-254-1116 and ask for the Varsity Special to get 10% off your purchase. AM 1060 KDUS Tempe Phoenix and KSLX HD2 Scottsdale Phoenix. This program is paid for by the Varsity Media Foundation, a 501c3 nonprofit educational organization and its partners. 
You're listening to the Varsity Sports Show, home of Arizona's youth, high school, college sports, and you, empowering education and enabling dreams, right here on KDUS AM 1060 in Arizona. And now, welcome to the Varsity Sports Show. We welcome you back here to the Varsity Sports Show on AM 1060 KDUS Radio. I am Douglas Santo from the Cronkite School of Journalism. And we are joined here this morning by 10-time high school state champion volleyball coach and a board member of the National Football Foundation, the Southern Chapter here in Arizona, and the flag football point person, Heather Moore. How are you doing this morning, Heather? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Doug. Thank you for joining us. Um, so we, we've got a lot to cover in a short period of time here, but um, I want to start off with um, just your legacy in coaching and volleyball. Um, but then how did you get into this position of the flag football point person with the um, Southern Arizona chapter? Oh, gosh, that's a long list there. But um, I started coaching volleyball about 30 years ago, and I started at Catalina High School, started boys volleyball there, and was there for about 16 years, won a couple state championships in boys volleyball, and then headed over to Sal Point, um, where I started the beach volleyball program there. And uh, so I won two indoor, three indoor state championships there, and we won four um, team state championships in beach, and then an individual state championship in beach. So loved volleyball all my life, and it's been great to coach it. Um, but now definitely moving in a different direction, and the Southern Arizona chapter of the NFF has been a great place to land, and Tim Kish is doing an amazing job of promoting the sport from the prep all the way up to collegiate and you know really it's just our our mission to to support um, football here in Tucson. Yeah so in today we're going to have the flag football event and it's really cool event because it's the first of its kind it's never been done before um, and so there's there's going to be a lot going on a lot of new stuff going on but um, we're hoping it goes amazing and then there's a lot to grow from um, just what exactly is going on today if you can explain to us. Well, it's a 20-team tournament, and uh, you know the first of its kind. And Brandon Sanders has done an amazing job of organizing and putting it together. But Tucson has has two high school teams competing in it, and then the rest of the teams, I believe, are from Phoenix. And we have 20 teams here at the University of Arizona competing on five different fields, um, with a culmination in stadium and that'll be the championship game. So it'll be pool play followed by tournament and then um, you know, to find the champion. And we're really excited to be a part of this event and kind of launch flag football into the area and just really let people know that, hey, this is here to stay. And you know, this is gonna be Olympic sport in LA in the next four years. So we're really looking forward to promoting that and supporting it along the way. Yeah, absolutely. And. Um Going from volleyball to flag football, where did, where did your interest in flag football kind of start? Oh my goodness, this is a great question because um, it started when I was coaching a girl named Rylan Bourget. Um, she played youth football her whole young adult life and now she's an adult um, and she's trying to be a part of the flag football national team. So she, I coached her and she is a great kid and she got me interested in flag football right away because she said, oh, hey, I'm a quarterback of my team. I, I, can't, I can't be a practice today. I have football. And I was like, oh, okay, well, that's so cool. And once we started chatting about it, um, she just kind of expressed her love for the game and um, I've watched her grow and learn and be a part of this. How do you think you can bring that to flag football and kind of bring the representation to it? I think it's really about support, you know, supporting these athletes and letting them know that, hey, you know, we're here for you in this entire journey. Um, the NFF, uh, the Southern Arizona chapter wants to support them all the way around from, you know, being there to push them um, at the beginning of their career all the way to the end. I mean, we do a great job with our scholarships. We do an amazing job with just, you know, being an organization that they can look to, to answer any questions, to push them along the way. And we're there for their families as well. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I saw that you earned your degree here at U of A. So you attended the University of Arizona. Um, what does it mean to you and how important do you think it is that now you're able to involve 
what you're involved in now with the flag football program um, and do such a cool event like that here at the University of Arizona. Yeah, for sure. I started actually at Pima Community College and I played two years of volleyball there. And so I kind of learned balancing the load of being an athlete. And so I get it. And then when I came to the university, I didn't, I started competing outdoor recreationally and um, but as a coach and a person in a position of mentorship, it's just an awesome opportunity to be able to support these kids along the way because it is really challenging to balance all the things that you have in your life and be a competitive athlete. So um, I, I feel like I've met the challenge when I was their age and I kind of know the drill and I know how to do that. And I've had a lot of kids around me that continue to learn and grow um, and how learn how to balance their life. And I think that's the main thing is balancing their life and balancing everything that they want to do and accomplish as an athlete. Yeah, and um, I was watching your the Hall of Fame class induction into the Pima Community Can County um, Sports uh -huh. Hall of Fame, and I read that you, one of your first state championships, you guys had actually, the women's team had beaten the men's volleyball team. <laughs> um, I feel like that's a really cool representation of like just growing women's sports and now bringing it into a flag football sport where... Obviously, there's men's flag football as well, but the main football is men's football. But now bringing up this, um, the women's side of it in flag football, um, how do you, how important do you think that is? And just cool to be able to see the women's side kind of showing representation and growing as well. I think that's an amazing part of it because I, when I first started coaching at Catalina, I, I incorporated both the boys and the girls, and we were never separate. You know, when I had an open gym, it was boys and girls, and I, that's what's beautiful about volleyball is that boys and girls play it. Well, that that's the same thing that's happening in football is that you know we, we can put both genders together and make it mesh and make it work. And so, co-ed um, flag football I think is out there as well, and it's just a cool thing that for the people to be able to look at each other and go, hey, I, I do what you do too. Tell me about what you do. And, and, and it's the same where in a lot of other sports, it's very different, you know, where, um, you know, volleyball as well as flag football, it, it is, you can talk about the same skills and same progressions. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. And I, I like how you compared it like those, it is like showing that they can play together. We don't have to separate it based on gender. Like we can all play the same sport um, and make it fun together as well and not isolate or anything like that. Um, going forward with this event today, um, obviously a huge step in the right direction. Um, what do you expect and look forward to in the future for the women's flag football? Well, I'm really hoping that more Tucson teams pick it up. You know, I, and I think it's difficult with field space. I think that's the one thing now, but as I've continue to learn more and more about flag football, the field is smaller and you can really kind of fit it into different areas. So I'm hoping that the high schools around town will kind of look at it and go, hey, this doesn't have to be on the football field. You know, we can go on the out on the outfield of the baseball or the softball field and make this happen. So first, I'm hoping that, that we pick it up more. And today, I really hope that the community comes out um, from Tucson and from Phoenix and comes down to support these ladies as they, you know, kind of build the sport and unfold here um, in Southern Arizona and watch it grow. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of that community involvement, um, supporting and uh, jumping on the back of this, um, how can we continue to grow that representation and support and um, just like educate the community on the sport in general? Yeah, I, well, I think the, the Southern Arizona chapter of the NFF does a good job of getting out to the different events, whether it be um, you know, the, the mini football players all the way up to prep football. Um, I know we make our presence known at girls flag football as well. And it's just being out there in the community and telling people what, what we're about and turn, that means we're telling them about what flag football is about. Yeah, absolutely. And going to backtrack a little bit, um, I wanted to hear more about, so you're on the board of the Northern Arizona chapter. Um, how did it kind of come across? Um, you getting into that flag football point position um, person. Okay. Well, you know, um, I, you know, I've been on the board for a couple of years now and, you know, flag football just got on our radar a couple years ago where, so I kind of came on at the same time girls flag football was coming along. And since I'm a coach, I'm a coach of a women's sport and I've been a coach of a boy's sport. It's also 
it's just something new and it's something to pioneer where I feel that same way about beach volleyball. You know, we were really pioneering that sport in Tucson. And um, since it's the beginning, I wanted to be a part of that. I wanted to be a part of the beginning of it and, and to support um, the girls that want to play it because I think they all need a push and they all need that person behind them saying, hey, let's do it. Give it a try. Take the risk. Get on board because once you do, you'll just be so satisfied. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I can't imagine a better push and motivator for them than somebody who's shown success at the high school level in volleyball so well um, with the 10 state championships and everything. Um, thank you for joining us. Is there anything you'd like, anything else you'd like to tell us about the fly football thing today and just going forward? Just going forward, I just want to get everybody out, you know, come on out and come down to the U of A. It's a free event, you know, it doesn't cost a thing. You can, you know, it's a great summer activity to do with your family, um, bring them down to support and just take a look and, you know, un understand what it's about because I, you know, for me too, I didn't even know what it was about until I kind of took a look at it. So it's really fun. It's engaging. It's fast. Um, it's high energy and uh, the ladies are out there working hard. So come on out and support them. Yeah, that's awesome. I really didn't know much about it until getting to talk to you and everybody today. And as you said, I think just educating the community on it will raise support and grow it in the future. But thank you, Heather, for joining us this morning. Thank you. I really appreciate you having me. Aaron, take it away. Sports Topics Weekly, right here on KDUS AM 1060 with me, the Doug Gottlieb Show, 1 to 3 p.m. APAC is your one-stop source for all your automotive and heavy-duty air conditioning parts, supplies, and equipment. They're family-owned and have been the Valley's go-to for all your auto AC needs since 1982. Whether it's for your everyday or vintage car, commercial, or off-road vehicle or equipment, APAC has you covered. Call APAC, double A, P A K, the AC experts at 602-254-1116 and ask for the Varsity Special to get 10% off your purchase. The Varsity Sports Show is proud to once again be the official broadcast team of the Hohokam Junior College Athletic Conference. We are back for another year of HJCAC football. We'll bring you the JUCO Game of the Week, on-site live coverage, weekly JUCO report on Saturday morning's Varsity Sports Show, and coming this fall, the weekly coaches show with Coach Doug Madoski. Stay tuned for more. JUCO football is alive and well in Arizona. Brought to you by the Varsity Sports Show and the HJCAC. Hey, Phoenix, Doug Gottlieb here. I'm bringing the best sports talk weekdays to you, 1 to 3 p.m., right here on KDUS AM 1060. Hi, this is Riley Robertson from Arizona State reporting for the Varsity Sports Show. Since Father's Day is tomorrow, I wanted to tell you all a little bit about my dad. I've been so lucky to have such an amazing support system in my life from my family, and especially from my dad. I am the person and sports fan that I am today because of him. He gave me my love for the Stars, Cowboys, Rangers, and Mavs, which I will forever be grateful for. Some of my best memories with him have come from attending different games such as Cowboys playoff games, every single Stars game, and watching the Rangers win the World Series. We got incredibly lucky that the Rangers played the Diamondbacks in the World Series last year because I was a Rangers fan coincidentally living in Tempe. My dad told me that he wanted to fly out to come to the world, one of the World Series games in Phoenix, but that would be too much of a hassle so he didn't want to do it. I ended up being able to convince him. I went to game four with one of my friends with the plan to go to game five with my dad. It just so happened that the Rangers had a chance to win the World Series during game five, but we both thought there was no way that it would actually happen. We were eager to the, go to the game, talking to all of the other Rangers fans about how they had driven or flown here just so they could see a Rangers win. 
Thankfully, they did end up winning that game and winning their first World Series. Being at that game with my dad was a memory that I will never forget because of how happy he was that he had finally gotten to be at a championship winning game for one of his favorite teams. And it was me that made that happen. It was such an incredible moment that I was able to share with him and it is something that I will cherish forever. One of the best pieces of advice that I've ever received was from my dad, and he said it to me when I was trying to pick out a major for college and figure out what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. He said, you'll never work a day in your life if you love what you do. And this ultimately led me to choosing to go to ASU, double majoring, and working in sports, which I couldn't be happier about. Thank you, Dad, for everything you've done for me, and happy Father's Day. This is Riley Robertson from Arizona State reporting for the Varsity Sports Show. Hello everyone, this is Mark Berger from the University of Wisconsin-Madison reporting for the Varsity Sports Show. I have the great opportunity here to talk with Coach Johnson, the Mesa Mountain View Toros head basketball coach. So Coach Johnson, if you could just tell me a little bit about some of the fundraisers that you're doing and how you're giving back to the community. Yeah, um, first off, giving back to the community, um, every year, multiple times, we, we take our whole program uh, to uh, uh, an op- uh, a place in town here where uh, we stuff food bags uh, at the food bank for uh, our pro- for uh, kind of needy families in town as, a- as well as kind of across the country and overseas. So it's a great opportunity for our guys to to go to go give and, and to give back. And then uh, also one thing we do as well is we adopt a family at Christmas time where our, our program will adopt a family and, and our kids will actually go shopping uh, for that family and wrap presents for them. And then uh, we'll go drop them off at their house and, and make sure uh, kind of a, a family need has, has a great Christmas. So um, great, great kind of things we do to try to help, help give back. Uh, then uh, fundraising, we, we, we do a lot of things throughout the year to, to try to fundraise. Um, we run a kids camp during the summertime where it's five weeks long and uh, we have over 700 kids in the community that, that come to the camp. And our players work the camp every day um, with the kids in town from, you know, grades one through eight. Um, that's, a, that's a big moneymaker for, for our program uh, that helps us throughout the year able to, to fundraise and buy things that we need. Um, as well as we'll do um, go out in the community and get sponsorships from uh, different businesses as well. Um, and run their, you know, put up ads in our gym for for them. Um, run their company ads on our uh, on our scoreboard, electronic scoreboard as well. Um, so it's kind of another way we fundraise. And then uh, we'll also do as well uh, a fundraiser where we'll have our families um, uh, kind of do a text message thon, where they'll kind of we'll send them a, a message, and the, the families and friends and people in the community can can donate as well. Well, that's awesome, and I know you talked about it. I believe you talked about the camps. You talked about these the Christmas and obviously also talked about the food banks. I think the food bank is a very great thing. It's definitely something that a lot of people can relate to in terms of not being able to put food on the table. I remember when COVID first hit and, you know, it, when COVID first hit in 2020, I remember hearing stuff that families had a hard time getting food on the table. And I'm sure you guys helped with that, especially during that. And even now out of COVID, like, you know, people can still relate to needing food and money is a very tough thing now. So how do you guys continue to help put food on the table for these people? Um, You know, we'll try to go at least once a month, you know, we'll, we'll take our, our, our whole program, about 45 kids from freshman to JV to varsity down to a uh, uh, opportunity village in town here. And, um, you know, just try to give back, uh, you know, stuffing bags of food, um, you know, try, trying to do everything we can just to, you know, um, be servant leaders, you know, for, for the community and, and to help out in any way we can. Um, you know, we're, we're so very blessed and fortunate here. Um, you know, one of the things we want to teach our players is, is to be servant leaders and to help out, you know, other people in the community. Um, that, that's all of our, our main jobs here while we're here on earth. So we, we want to kind of teach our players to do that and, I think mean, that's one great way we can help instill that in our players and, and try to get back and help out in any way we can doing that. Well, it's very awesome to hear, Coach Johnson. Do you have any more future new opportunities that you have in terms of fundraising? Um, so we have two more weeks of our, our kids' camp this summer. We're on week number three right now. 
Um, so we'll we'll finish that out, and then uh, we'll do uh, some what we call skill academies, where they're kind of mini basketball camps for on Saturdays uh, for for kids in town that you know want to come in the gym and get extra work, and um, so it's another fundraising opportunity as well. And then um, uh, we'll, we'll in July we we really try to go out in the community and, and hit up sponsors and and try to try to get as many many sponsors as we can uh, to try to help help raise funds to to help pay for. Uh, the stuff our program needs. Well, well, that's awesome. Well, I think the camp is a very great thing. You know, I did summer camp back in my younger days, and I remember doing that. I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. That's another reason why I wanted to talk to you is just I feel like a lot of people can relate to these things. Do they know someone that maybe is struggling to put food on the table? So I'm very glad they got to talk about it. So, again, this is Coach Johnson, the Mesa Mountain View Toros head basketball coach, and this is Mark Berger reporting for the Varsity Sports Show from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Welcome back to the Varsity Sports Show. Uh, we are here in Tucson, and uh, welcome back. Um, we've got uh, joining us on the line, Aaron, do we have Mark Berger? Okay, go ahead, Doug, take it away. Perfect, Mark. It was great hearing from Coach Johnson at Mountain View. Um, just what led you to picking Coach Johnson to interview? Um, can you hear me all right? Yes, I can. Could you hear me? Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry, sorry. I'm in the airport right now, but yeah. So, yeah, to go to the question, yeah, I interviewed – Coach Andy Johnson from Mountain, from Mountain View because, you know, I think it's just it's, – it's more what you do off the court than what you do on the court, right? And I think that the coach and his players just, just did a phenomenal job within the community, right? The fundraisers, which stretched from the trying to put food on the table for these local families, with the local food pantry, to working at these different summer kids camps uh, that they were doing. I think it's just very remarkable to see how they're getting involved with the community and how they can make the community a better place. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't have said it better myself. Um, I love how in, um, involved in the community he is um, and getting his players involved and showing them that it's more than just about the sport of basketball. Um, thank you for joining the show, Mark. Yeah, thank you so much. You have a great day. You too. Transitioning now, I'd like to take a moment to thank the National Football Foundation Southern Arizona Region Chapter for the opportunity to have our radio show live from Lowell Stevens Football Facility here at Arizona St Arizona University this morning. <laughs> the University <laughs> of Arizona. You know, we, we deal with so many different schools, but, but the U of A has a special place in my heart, first of all, because I'm an Arizona guy. I grew up in the state of Arizona in Phoenix. Uh, I'm, I graduated from ASU, but when I, when I coached, we had games here. Uh, so you develop that rivalry and the community rivalry and that's a whole other level the territorial cup the coaches that that we interacted with from the u of a great guys uh, asu i mean it's all a big coaching fraternity so to sit here with uh you know with uh, um uh ricky hunley with brandon sanders great guys you come up through the ranks and uh it, it's been fun i want to pay a special thank you doug before you continue on to number one lisa mandel with the the southern arizona chapter of the national football foundation she is the glue on this thing. Um, she coordinated everything. She's like my new best friend. She's the new best friend of our program. We have to. I've got to get a, a, a plaque and a Hall of Fame for the Varsity Sports Show, and, and her name is going to be uh, on at the top of the list. Uh, Want to thank Donna Laminak, uh, the Assistant Director, Area Director of Sales for Focus Hospitality Management, that uh, ac accommodated us for with the uh, Hampton Inn here in Tucson. It gave me a chance to get a good night's sleep uh, before we did the show today, and so. Thank Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Lisa, for coordinating that. Uh, go ahead and, uh, Doug, continue on with, uh, with your acknowledgments. Yeah, Vince, as you were talking about, Lisa, with, with the um, Ari Northern Arizona or er, Southern, Southern Arizona, Arizona chapter, yep. Chapter, yep. Um, the, the event going on today, that football camp, it's the first of its kind. It's one of Coach Brent Brennan's uh, that includes the flag football camp in his summer camps. This year, representatives from the Cardinals organization will be present as the NFL has made it a priority one for clubs to be involved in the grassroots build of flag football. Volunteers from the Snoop Dogg Arizona Bowl will also be on the field. And then, later this fall, the Southern Arizona chapter is partnering with the Snoop Dogg Arizona Bowl for their third Friday Night Lights tour. The Arizona Bowl, Blue Blazers, and NFF SAC board members will gather at highlighted weekly games in show of support for prep play and will honor a player of the game for each team. The following week, Southern Arizona coaches will select a player of the week who represents the region. 
Those players are then eligible for the NFF SAC Player of the Year presented center field during the Arizona Bowl. Now, after the break, stay with us. We'll have an interview with one of our own, Thaddeus Mitchell, from Southern Texas University, interviewing the Dallas ISD Chief of Police, John Lawton. So, if I can interject, yeah, one thing about these interviews that we're doing today, first of all, they're, they're people that are tied into the community. We wanted to make sure that these interviews and these, the content was relatable to everywhere we're going. So, so even Thad at Texas Southern interviewing a former police chief, there's information there that's very relatable to things going on in every community, and that's the purpose. And, of course, it's our Father's Day special, so to stay tuned because you're hearing some stories about some amazing dads. Guys, don't go anywhere. Doug and I are Live from the University of Arizona, the Sands Club at U of A Wildcat Stadium with uh, just an amazing, amazing room here in the, the College Football Hall of Fame room for the National Football Foundation Southern Arizona chapter. Don't go anywhere, guys. Go Varsity. Catch the Doug Gottlieb Show weekdays from 1 to 3 p.m. right here on KDUS AM 1060 and online at KDUS1060.com. The Angry Crab Shack in Tempe. With an experience so good it remains indescribable. With something for every seafood lover. Try one of their amazing custom seafood boils, sandwiches, appetizers, and salads. Angry Crab Shack Tempe is located east of I-10 on Warner Road. 480-674-3847. The Angry Crab Shack in Tempe. Come ready to eat. Interact with Bob Kemp's poll question on KDUS1060.com. That's KDUS1060.com. And while you're there, check out Bob Kemp's bottom line at KDUS1060.com. We welcome you back to the Varsity Sports Show here on AM 1060 KDUS Arizona Radio Station. We've had a action-packed morning this morning talking with plenty of exciting guests, and now we're going to hear a little bit from Thad Mitchell in an interview with John Lawton. Take it away, Aaron. What's going on, everybody? I'm Thaddeus Mitchell from Texas Southern University, and you are listening to the Varsity Sports Show. Today, I have a special guest for you today. Uh, he was the chief of police for Dallas ISD, uh, retired. I know him as Coach John. His name is John Lawton. How are you doing today? Doing great. Excited to be here. Uh, so, first question I got is, can you share a can you share a bit about your journey and career path that led you to become the chief of police? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I initially, um, after graduating from high school in uh, St. Mary's, Georgia, I actually went into the United States Army, and I spent about eight years there. Um, after getting out of the Army, um, of course, while I was in there, I was in uh, communications, telecommunications. Um, but when I got out, I uh, did a little time in the civilian sector, probably a couple of years, two, three years, and decided that um, I uh, wanted to do something that was similar to the Army. Mm -hmm. So that had that kind of structure, camaraderie, uh, uh, unity, um, team building. So I went into the, uh, joined the Dallas Police Department. And that was back in uh, 1994. So um, spent almost 24 years serving in Dallas Police mm -hmm. Department. Um, I then, um, of course, uh, retired from there and went over to Dallas ISD because I wanted to take my experience because I thought it was really important uh, that we uh, protect our kids as they're getting educated. Mm -hmm. So I went in assistant chief for Dallas ISD and then within a year I became the uh, chief of police for the Dallas ISD police department did that for five years now currently um, so I have a total of 30 years in law enforcement I have since um, joined an organization called region 10 
which is responsible for providing uh, all types of services to our school districts. And I am responsible for the safety and security programs um, that reach in 10 offers to um, everybody within our region. So it covers like 104 school districts and charter schools. So that's what I do now, still continuing to keep uh, our kids safe. Yes, sir. Uh, can you, I have another question. Have you seen sports, how have you seen sports impact the students and the broader community within Dallas ISD? Oh, I, I definitely, um, well, first of all, I know sports within Dallas ISD offers uh, a lot of opportunities to a lot of our kids. It gives them the opportunity to earn scholarships. Uh, where they can uh, go to college and seek ad additional education. And, and the benefit of that is they come out of school and they're debt free. So mm -hmm. um, sports has definitely been beneficial within Dallas ISD. Um, also what it offers, I think it, it provides um, a uh, structure um, and it helps people develop into leaders and it also teaches them discipline. So, and, and outside of that, good health, you know, how to stay mm -hmm. in shape will benefit them in the future. So um, there definitely are some benefits, a lot of benefits to athletics. Okay, one more question. Uh, what yes. were some of the most rewarding and challenging aspects of your role as chief of police? Um, making a difference. I mean, when you are the head of an organization, uh, you have a vision and you can implement it. Right. And of mm -hmm. course, you can't do it by yourself. You're working with other people. But um, there's things, the things that you feel are important or that you want to see done in the area of safety and security. Um, you have that ability uh, to make those things happen, you know. And so my role as a leader of an organization like that is to sell that vision, to get buy in from your troops and um, make that happen. Well, that's it. Uh, I want to thank you for being on the show. And if I have another chance, I would like to interview again at some point. Okay. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. And I uh, wish you the best. Thank yes, you, sir. This has been your Varsity Sports Show. And again, I'm Thaddeus Mitchell from Texas Southern University. Welcome you back here. As I am you joining you here, I'm Douglas Santo from the ASU Cronkite School of Journalism. I got, I got to I got to interrupt you, Doug. Vince here. Hey, we're so we're we're overwhelmed. We're sitting here like looking around. We keep you guys are wondering why are these guys organized today? We're, guys, it's live radio. Give me a break. Uh, but but also we're in the room here, at the Sands Club at, uh, at at Wildcat Stadium. I'm looking down. I see a sea of blue and red uh, on the field, and I'm looking on the other side. I mean, we see a campus. We see the Catalina foothills behind us. So there, we're having sidebar conversations and. <laughs> And, and, you know, while the show is going on. And so forgive us if we're a little overwhelmed, but this is an amazing facility. It's it's incredible, and it's fun uh, to, to be down here. Um, and, 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 I mean, this is coming from an ASU guy. I'm, I'm an ASU guy through and through, but it's kind of cool to be here in, in, uh, in Tucson uh, for, for this event today because we're promoting it. We're not promoting the university. We're not promoting the, the facility. We're promoting flag football, and that's what this show is about today while we're in the the, um, uh, the the Southern Arizona chapter college football hall of fame room for the national football foundation. And we look on these names on the wall, one of which is Ricky Hunley who joined us in the first segment. Uh, but Doug talk a little bit about what, you know, about the, the national football foundation. Yeah. The national football foundation. Um, it's, they actually have two awards that I'd like to talk about um, okay. that are for students who thrive on and off the field. They have a Scholar Athlete Honorary Award that is awarded to senior football players with a base 3.25 GPA who are civic leaders. And they also have this 12th Man Awards for individuals who are involved with their high school football program who may not be the stars on the field, but provide leadership, support, and really are the unsung heroes who are community involved. Whether that's the player that gets everyone ready for the game or the student manager, they may have extra life responsibilities, but they still maintain a 3.0 GPA. And those applications for those awards through the Southern Arizona chapter will be open on their website at www.nffsoaz.org in August. In all 45 schools, their head coaches and ADs under the Southern Arizona chapter's care will have access to the application. 
From those submitted applications, the individual school's head coach and AD will submit two names for the nomination. That's just one of the many great things the Southern yeah. Arizona chapter is doing here. Now, Doug, I have to ask you, because uh, Thad out of Texas Southern just did a, a great report. Is Thad on the line, Aaron? Okay, awesome. Let's go to Thad really quick. Doug, go ahead. Take it away with Thad. Perfect. I appreciate you join, for joining us, Thad. Um, just can you tell us a little bit more about um, why you picked John Lawton to, to interview? Um, so, yeah, I've known John Lawton almost my whole life. I'm good friends with his son. And, yeah, I kind of knew that he was the chief of police. Well, he's retired now, but I knew he was the chief of police for Dallas ISD. And I knew that he had the opportunity to do a lot of things for the community and for the school district and for all the students that play sports or just regular students in general. Yeah, that's awesome. And um, he obviously served our country and then uh, went into the police department, but he talked about how sports brings everyone together. Um, how special do you think that sports can just bring everyone together despite their background, despite their occupation, whatever the case may be? Um, yeah, I think sports can bring people together, yeah, like you said, from no matter who they are. Because uh, you can be... Any race, well, sports, when you're playing sports, there's people from different races, different backgrounds, and you're all playing the same sport. Um, it shows a lot of people how to work together, how to be a team, and I think that also helps bring people together despite their differences. And you just learn each other. Sports helps you learn each other, uh, what's, what's different about them and what's different about you. And I think people are able to gain insight on that and learn from it. And it helps outside of sports. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I really appreciate you for joining us this morning, Thad, um, and have a great rest of your day. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, now we're going to hear from Mac and Thad on what their fathers mean to them. Take it away, Aaron. from San Diego State for Varsity Sports Show. I just wanted to say Happy Father's Day to my dad, Tom Pham. He's an amazing dad who raised his kids right. He's a man of few words. My dad works as a computer engineer for a living. My dad gave up his dreams for me to chase my dreams of being a professional sports analyst. Like some parents, especially Asian parents, my dad wanted me to pursue a career as a lawyer or a doctor. And of course, I didn't listen to him. As I chased my dreams, he never discouraged me from chasing them. He was always concerned about my future because he's just worried that this dream of mine won't work out in such a competitive field. My dad just tells me to keep the faith going as I navigate through life. I want to make him proud and also that he doesn't worry as much about me. I want to take the burden off him, as he's done so much for me, put him into retirement. Happy Father's Day to my dad and all the fathers in the world. For Varsity Sports Show, I'm Mac Pham. What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the Varsity Sports Show. I'm Thaddeus Mitchell from Texas Southern University, and today I would like to talk to you about my dad, Clifford Mitchell, the best father I could have. Right now, he's 62 years of age. He was born in Shreveport, Louisiana, and raised in a little town called Lufkin, Texas. He's came from nothing, and I'm proud to see how far he's came in life. From as far back as I can remember, he has always worked with his hands. As of now, he works as a supervisor for Mesquite Independent School District, working in the technical field. When he first started working for the school district, he started off just mowing lawns throughout the schools. He likes to dance and sing, but he really can't sing, and he likes to watch sports. <laughs> That's kind of where I got my love for sports from. As a kid, he would either take me to all my practices or coach me on one of my little league teams. As I got older, he would be there to watch at all my games. He is also a pastor at my home church, 
He's been one since I can remember too. He will always have me in church either dancing, singing in the choir, or in the back controlling the music. He's taught me a lot of things about life and especially how to be a man. He's taught me how to take care of my family and he's ready for me to have kids on my own. <laughs> but that's just gonna have to wait. And he's also taught me if I work hard that I can do anything and reach any goal. Seeing how God has blessed him by being a man of faith has also encouraged me to keep my faith and someone who can always make you laugh. He always tells me how proud I am and my wish is to continue to make him proud. To be honest, I wish he knew how proud of him I am and how I wish to live up to what he has been and who he is. If he hears this, I want him to know that I love him and happy Father's Day. Again, I'm Thaddeus Mitchell from Texas Southern University and thank you for listening to the Varsity Sports Show. Before we head to a break, I'd like to take the chance to um, highlight the senior showcase for the Southern Arizona chapter. Um, the chapter senior showcase will be back at the o OUAZ on February 15th in 2025, which connects Arizona prep talent with D2, D3, and NAIA institutions and coaches. Now, when we return from the break, we'll hear from Nick Anderson from UNLV interviewing the Coronado High School head football coach, Sean Dupreez, and we'll call in live Michael Santo, otherwise known as my dad, to the show. Once again, you're listening to the Varsity Sports Show, and I'm Douglas Santo from ASU Cronkite. Extra point with local and national topics, betting lines, and banter. Weekdays 10 to noon on KTUS AM 1060, KTUS1060.com, and the KTUS 1060 app. The Varsity Sports Show, live with Vince D'Alessio, every Saturday morning from 9 to 11 a.m. Features all the local youth, high school, college sports, and more, both around the valley and beyond. Enjoy go-to segments with coaches and players from around the valley. Tune in to the Varsity Sports Show with Vince and Guest, Saturday morning from 9 to 11 a.m., right here on KTUS AM 1060, online at KTUS1060.com and the KTUS 1060 app. <laughs> Every Monday night, check out Ray Adams as he hosts the Monday Night Golf and Lifestyle Show from 6 to 7 p.m. here on KDUS AM 1060. This is Nicholas Anderson from the Hanks Greenspun School of Journalism at UNLV reporting for the Varsity Sports Show. This week, I had the pleasure to talk to Las Vegas' Coronado High School head coach, Sean DePriest, discussing his journey and his team's success, along with overcoming adversity and what they have planned for the 2024-25 season, along with the importance of academics. Hear it here first from Coach DePriest himself on his journey to Coronado. At some point, a job would open here in Las Vegas that um, I would, you know, really like to pursue and, and try to get. And um, Coronado was one of those schools that um, I was hoping that, you know, eventually maybe it would pop open. And I heard some rumors going around that it was going to be open. And I phone call and next thing you know, we were interviewing and, and getting this thing rolling. So um, I was very fortunate that Coronado opened. I think that it's, um, you know, that's no one public high school in, in the state. Um, push out a lot of, for academics, push out a lot of kids. Um, the athletics have been outstanding in all sports. Um, I think this year we had... Um, volleyball plays second, flag football, both girls and boys soccer won it. Um, uh, boys volleyball was up there in the championship. Baseball was was there. Softball, I think, won it. I mean, so all the sports have really been have been really been good at Coronado, you know, through the history for for many years. So I'm um, very fortunate, very excited uh, to get the opportunity at a large school, 3,600 students, uh, um, very smart, very smart kids, which helps a lot. That means that we can do a lot more things and and you know expound on what we want to do. Um, on and off the field. And, and coming in here to Coronado, um, you know, replacing a, a good coach, Freddie Blitnikoff Jr., um, that was there, uh, you know, I had to see where we were at and see what we had and, and to, you know, install a new program. There's a lot to that. And, um, you know, number one is, is gathering coaches and, um, you know, the players and everybody getting on the same page and setting our goals and, and then begin to work. And, um, you know, I got hired in March of last year, which is a little bit a little bit late. Um, we missed January, February, March. Um, phase of the program, which is a lot of lifting and um, in the weight room and a lot of mental tough um, toughness things. So, you know, we could tell a little bit that, that we missed that phase last year, um, number one in the strength, but I think overall in, in just the full year of programs. With Coronado finishing rank six in the state of Nevada, Coronado had to play through one of the most grueling schedules in Las Vegas. 
which included top schools like Bishop and Liberty High School. A monumental moment came for Coach DePriest when they were able to take down Desert Pine Jaguars in the first round, winning 35-12 after losing to the Jaguars 48-7 in the regular season. Second, first half it was tight, came out the second half, we didn't play well at all, and ended up, um, you know, the running clock um, ended up going on us. And, um, you know, we had a, we had a big heart-to-heart -heart after that game with the, with the team um, about where we want to be, about what it takes to, to compete um, at a level. Um, especially in this division with these teams, and um, the boys, I think that was a, that was one of those points where they made an adjustment and they and they made a switch and decided that they needed to be a little faster and they needed to be a little meaner and, and they needed to um, play really really tough for four quarters. And when we went to Desert Pines for that first round, you know, the, the first day of practice on that Monday, I looked at everybody and I said, "All right, here's our second chance." And they were they were lucky from day one from on that Monday. Um, we had a great week of practice. Uh, we were healthy. Um, the guys were excited to play. They were excited to be in the playoffs at the highest level. And um, we came out and played really, really well. We played really, really physical football. Um, complete different team than what we played the first time. And, um, and we played really well and pretty much dominated throughout that game. Heading into next season with high expectations, Coach DePriest is excited for the upcoming 2025 season with multiple players returning next season. So we are extremely excited about that, um, that they're, they're seasoned now, you know, they're seasoned vets. And, um, and coming going into the second year of um, my tenure, um, I and the coaches are extremely excited about where we're at in a short period of time and, and how far these guys have come along. And um, again, the excitement that they're showing to, to get out there and go is, is what makes us excited. So um, things are looking good. We've got a good sophomore class and we've got a nice freshman class that came in. So a nice junior class. You know, the future is bright. We've got a lot of, a lot of young players that are excited about all student athletes understand the importance of academics and what academics can do for you in your future. Coach DePriest goes in depth on the importance of academics. It's, it's one of the big things we talk about is being academic state champions. Uh, when I was at Demonte Ranch, we were academic state champions three years, from three years, and um, carried over a 3.6 GPA on a, on a varsity team. Um, I, I think it's there's so much that goes along with that because it's discipline, right? It's discipline to be able to go to the classroom, um, not just be an athlete. Um, you know, it, it takes so much, and, and again, Coronado, Coronado pushes pretty hard, so these on, on another level as far as um, how they're pushed academically. So we do talk about it a lot, and our goal is to be academic state champions. I'm thrilled to hear that Coach DePriest is preaching academics to his players, and every coach should be preaching academics to their players. We wish Coach DePriest and the Coronado Cougars the best heading into next season. Make sure to follow them on social media and keep up with them throughout the 2024 and 2025 season. For the Varsity Sports Show, I'm Nicholas Anderson. And now we're going to be joined on the show by Nick Anderson. Nick, are you there? Hey, how's it going, Doug? Good, how are you? Thanks for joining the show. So it was really nice hearing about um, Coach Sean Dubreeze and just um, – how important it, he has a focus on both on the field and off the field in the classroom as well um, and just balancing all those. So uh, what was your thought process and how did you end up picking Sean Dupree's, um to interview? Yeah, so before I go into that, I know Sean Dupreeze and his Coronado Cougars are watching in right now, so I appreciate them listening in. But, you know, Sean Dupreeze, he checked off both, both boxes and spoke really well on overcoming adversity and the importance of academics. You know, he comes from a, a winning program in Devontae Ranch where he went 77-35, to 35, and he comes over the Coronado, and they ended up going to a uh, – basically, they, they go into a better conference where it features some of the toughest schools in the world, like Bishop Gorman, who's number one pretty much every year, Liberty High School, and they have hurdles, you know, throughout the season, and, you know, they're able to overcome adversity, especially when he talked about that win over Desert Pines when they lost to them in the regular season and then ended up beating them in the first round of the playoffs. It was really special to hear that – he pre they could pretty much play with anyone, and that's the message he wanted to, you know, say to his players. And then he he speaks on the importance of academics. And when he was at the Monte Ranch, he ended up um, becoming state champions three times. And you know, I think that speaks volumes to just everyone can attest to because you know academics can get you far. And if you're a football player, you know, an athlete, you know. At the end of the day, not all athletes are going to be playing sports in their future. So, you know, going to high school, getting that diploma, which eventually going to college, getting that, you know, that degree, and then uh, getting a high-paying job is really important. I believe Sean DePriest really spoke well on that. And, you know, it turned out really well. I think everyone can attest to. Yeah, I completely agree with everything you said. Um, I really appreciate you joining the show um, and hearing it from uh, Coach Sean DePriest. Uh, thank you, Nick. Absolutely. I'll take care.
So as we transition now, we're going to try to get my dad on the line to wish him a happy Father's Day. Um, I uh, <laughs> messed up the phone calls and uh, put my phone number in instead of his to call oh, him. Oh, you did. Okay. So, yeah, we'll get him on the line. But, uh, you know, it's been, it's been an interesting show. I have to tell you, uh, you know, we started off the, the week not really knowing, thought, you know what, it would be great to, to see a little bit more of the state, to head down um, to Tucson because they had some events going on. They had this big flag football uh, camp, the first of its kind that they were putting on, and, and head football coach, uh, the new head football coach, Brent Brennan, who's very in, uh, involved with the camp, was going to be you know, helping to, to uh, coordinate some activities around it. And then we had Brandon Sanders, who's been an icon uh, you know, in, in, in this program. He played here, and, and uh, uh, he's, he's been a member of the uh, board of the National Football Foundation, Southern Arizona chapter. So we, we we set everything up throughout the course of the week, and then all of a sudden, we're like, okay, well, can we get Coach Hunley on? Yeah, okay, Coach Hunley. Then we've got Brandon Sanders sitting here, so we threw Brandon Sanders on. And then we had Abby Rustand here, and you know, who's a flag football phenom and being tied in with the, the WNFC, the Women's National Football Conference, which, hello, we are the broadcast team for the Las Vegas Silver Stars. And, uh, and so it was a, a natural progression of this six degrees of Kevin Bacon and, uh, you know, and, and how everybody is so interconnected. And then we had Heather Moore, who's a 10 times state volleyball champion in boys and girls and uh, and a, a pillar of this community and a member of of the national football foundations board as well and then we have doug santo who's co-hosting today and it's a father's day special and i'm a dad and doug's dad was it was you know being part of the show and other dads and my dad and uh and so it's just been an incredible show and how we've had to pivot through things and why um, uh, our in-studio producer, the amazing, talented Aaron Decker, hasn't strangled us yet, I don't know, but that being said, Aaron, do we have uh, uh, um, Doug's dad on the phone? Maybe. Not yet. Okay. Still waiting. Um, So anyway, that, oh, he's all set. So, okay, Doug, take it away with your dad. Dad, can you hear me? I hear you, buddy. Perfect. Thank you for joining the show. Sorry, I, you know, brain fart. I put in my phone number instead of your phone number. <laughs> no problem, buddy. But thank you for joining, and uh, happy Father's Day. Happy early Father's Day. Um, Thanks. What have you thought of the show so far today? Uh, it's, a, it's a tremendous show. Uh, I'm so proud of you. It's a privilege to be your dad. And uh, you know that I feel that my biggest purpose in life is being a father. So I'm so proud of you. And Vince, uh, thank you for having Douglas, uh, giving him this opportunity. Um, it, it's wonderful. Yes, thank you, Dad. You've always been one of my big. You're my always been my biggest supporter, um, and I'm so happy to be able to have you join the show today. Um, what are your What are your plans for Father's Day tomorrow? Well, your sister and I will be at church and go to lunch together. I haven't seen her in two weeks because you guys are on vacation. And, uh, you know, I have a big T-bone steak ready to go to. So. Mr. Santo, I have to ask you, this is Vince here, by the way. Did, did you like yeah. the show? Yeah, it's fantastic. Okay. Okay. Your, your son's doing a really good job for us, by the way. But, but I'm kind of like, I'm the star of the show. Do you, do you, am I doing a good job? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. No, I'm kidding. Your son did a great job, by the way. Thank you so much for listening, for tuning in, and uh, and for participating. I want to wish you a happy Father's Day. I want to wish all the fathers out there a happy Father's Day. Doug, take us out. Awesome. Thank you, Dad. And thank you, Vince. So thank you to the National Football Foundation Southern Arizona Chapters, Lisa Mandel, for coordinating our broadcast at Tucson's iconic Arizona Wildcat Stadium. To our amazing live guests, U of A Wildcat assistant football coach Ricky Hundley, the flag football player Abby Rustand, National Football Foundation board member Heather Moore, and all of our amazing team members. Please be sure to check out all of our archived content on Twitter at Varsity Show, as well as Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Thanks to our producer Aaron Decker, and join us back here next Saturday at 9 a.m. on AM 1060 KDUS Arizona and the Varsity Sports Show. On behalf of my partner, Vince Delisio, I'm Douglas Santo from ASU, and you're listening to the Varsity Sports Show. Go Varsity!
Hey listeners, Vince Delisio here from the Varsity Sports Show. We are so excited and honored that you start your weekends off with us. Our team is comprised of very talented high school and college students working toward a future in media. We appreciate your support and any opportunities that we can to promote your teams or businesses will go a long way toward helping us continue supporting our talented team. We are a 501c3 nonprofit educational organization and we use our platform to not only promote all of the great things happening in the world of sports locally and nationally, but also continue to promote and encourage future broadcasters as they grow in this industry. Please consider a tax-deductible donation to the Varsity Media Foundation. To find out more, please email us at info at varsitysportshow.com or check us out on Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok at Varsity Sports Show or on Twitter at Varsity Show. Once again, thank you for supporting the Varsity Sports Show, now a nationally syndicated program on the SportsMap Radio Network. Thank you for listening to the Varsity Sports Show, where our mission is to empower education and enable dreams, creating an unmatched platform to showcase talent both in front of and behind the microphone in radio, television, podcast, and live streaming. The Varsity Sports Show, still your home for youth, high school, college, and you in Arizona and beyond. AM 1060 KDUS Tempe Phoenix and KSLX HD2 Scottsdale Phoenix.